And we're back with the answer to today's biz quiz about how many jobs has Georgia's film and TV industry created? The answer is 92,000. According to the Motion Picture Association of America, not only has Georgia created thousands of film and TV jobs, but it's also paid more than $4 billion in wages. While Hollywood remains the epicenter of the film industry, Georgia is staking a claim as its southern contender. The Peach State has a long history of hosting film and TV productions dating back to the 1970s. Thanks to several tax incentives, during the last decade, Georgia has become a hot spot for big budget films. Don't beat this river. The Hollywood blockbuster Deliverance was filmed mostly in Rabin County in northeast Georgia. The canoe scene filmed right on the Chattahoochee. Georgia's then Governor Jimmy Carter established the State Film Commission in 1973 to market the state to the movie industry. The 1980s and 90s would bring plenty of lights, cameras, and action to Georgia, but the biggest boost would come in 2008. That's when Governor Sonny Perdue signed legislation that would give production companies a 20% tax credit for making movies, television shows, and other projects in the Peach State. Financial perks, a diverse geography, and an increase in local production studios would create an industry worth nine and a half billion dollars, helping to make Georgia a star in its own right. Frank Patterson is the president of Pinewood Atlanta Studios, one of the largest production facilities in the world. He joined the company in 2017 and quickly realized the real investment the studio had made in Georgia. From Marvel superheroes to Netflix originals, Pinewood is a major player, transforming Georgia into the Hollywood of the South as you'll see in today's executive profile. When I lived in the Hill Country in Texas, in Bernie, uh, I think there were 1,700 people in the little town outside of San Antonio. And you know, and today it's a, it's a, it's a wealthy suburb of San Antonio. I mean, right. It's a beautiful place. It felt like I was a confused Hill Country kid who didn't know what he wanted to do. Uh, and, and, and in a way, it really seeded for me uh, a lot of creative thinking uh, that kind of led to my career. So I feel very fortunate that I grew up in that little town. What role did <clears throat> the arts play in your life as a kid? My dad uh, was a musician in the 50s, and he was also an entrepreneur. I grew up um, going to live music, uh, watching him play, uh, hanging around musicians and and artists and actors. Fortunately, I think my DNA includes something, you know, in the arts. I, I, I gravitate toward it. And you were a keyboardist. That was, that was your instrument Yeah, piano choice. player. Yeah, um, of course. Yeah, my dad was too. And so I grew up playing. I've played all my life. My mother says that I'm a, a musician first and a filmmaker second, even <laughs> though professionally it's certainly the other way around. <laughs> right. So you leave Bernie and go up to Waco. I have this idea that I might be able to play football for Baylor, which was just ridiculous. Needless to say, I didn't do that. Um, and, you know, I, I got to say, I, I flunked out three times in a row. Mm. Just, I was just an awful student. And I, I, they had this... Uh, this, this music hall with all these pianos, and I'd go spend my time down there and not go to school. And so it's ironic, of course, that I became a dean of a, a Research One college. And so anytime I had problem students, I would say, look, you know, your grades are challenging. That's why I'm here to talk to you. But just know, I failed out three times. So you can get past this. I had um, a, some new faculty members who had, happened to come to Baylor at this time that I sort of got my act together. Mm -hmm. One was the former head of uh, research and development for Sony, and he was focusing his research on how uh, high-definition video might help replace film. It was kind of interesting. And so it was this new technologies, emerging technologies department that was focused on storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got into it because I was a musician who was asked to just write some music for a commercial for one of the faculty members. And I really got into it and you know, made me realize I could apply writing and music to, these creative, uh, to this creative field. And really, Baylor helped me uh, feel confident walking into the movie business. There was a real demand for any kind of storytelling to just fill shelves, right? There was a time when we didn't have movies in our homes. Right. There was this big demand for that, and I had this idea that I could raise money and write stories. and and make, uh, I made a first a little horror film that my mom called a horrible little film, and it was, but it helped me, you know, learn how to make a movie, and then it sold, and it sold for seventy nine ninety nine a piece for 100,000 units, and I thought, wow, I'm in the movie business. Right. 
and that was in Texas, and I realized, really, I was making the movies in Texas, but I was really doing out west in California, was building the distribution relationships. Right. So you get approached by Pinewood to come to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. What was that uh, recruitment process like, and what, <laughs> what did you think you were coming to, and what did you find when you arrived here? When the Pinewood team approached me, it was about what is the future. Atlanta's really popping. What does it look like? Uh, you know, how, how, what's the intersection for uh, Georgia and, and the film industry? I, I was really unaware of the real investment that uh, the, the, the Pinewood Atlanta board and investors had made in Georgia. I didn't really know that it was you know, 18 sound stages and the second largest purpose-built studio in the world. What do you like about the future right now? There's a culture here in Georgia that recognizes we just can't sit on success. Atlanta was emerging as an entertainment media cluster in the 90s. And that's before I made the decision to move here. That's what I was looking at. Where's the capital? Where's the labor? What's a real opportunity? Is this just going to be a tax incentivized market that's going to go away tomorrow? Right. Well, in truth, what happened was that Atlanta had been building, because of Turner and all of its networks, because of um, innovators like Tyler Perry, who said, no, I'm not going to do this in Hollywood, right? The fact that the state decided to be really smart about tax policy was really the thing that activated all the work that had been going on for 15 years, right. and no other state has that. And what I like about our state leadership and our city leadership uh, is that they are focused on the whole supply chain, and they recognize we move from being a world-class production center to being a globally recognized entertainment ecosystem as we focus on not only fostering our own internal creatives here in this marketplace, but being a home for the best creative, creators, right? The funding. And what's happening in our marketplace right now in the movie business at large with the direct-to-consumer platforms, that's creating an opportunity for distribution that never existed before. So I think we can turn around and have a complete supply chain for entertainment media, and Georgia can be a leader in that globally in the next four or five years. Pinewood Atlanta Studios will soon get a rebranding. The Pinewood Group sold its equity in August to its partner Rivers Rock, a trust of the Caffey family. The change will not affect film production and Frank Patterson will remain in his position.